covering more than two million square miles, the Amazon is immense, not only in size, but also in biodiversity and human history, with hundreds of tribes living there in total harmony with their environment, as they have done for thousands of years. More than 60% of that forest is in Brazil, and one of the country's most esteemed documentary photographers is now sharing his unique perspective on that territory with a new exhibition named Amazonia. Sebastian Salgado, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you here in the studio. Now, this collection of photos evokes a geographical location in all of its diversity, its relief, its climates, its people. And that visual immersion in the subject is accompanied by a soundscape composed by French DJ and producer uh, Jean-Michel Jarre. Can you tell us why that's an important element of the show? It is a very important element. That was the wish of the curator of the, the exhibition, Lelia Salgado, my wife, she designed the show, and she wished the sounds of the Amazonia through a music. And uh, we had the contact with Jean-Michel Jarre, and Jean-Michel composed this amazing, beautiful music. And that's a kind of guideline of the show. OK, well, let's take a listen to some of those sounds of the forest in Jean-Michel Jarre's interpretation. Now, Sebastian, you've been photographing the Amazon for many years, but I believe that some of the imagery in this show comes from a trip you made when you wanted to go deeper into the jungle than you'd ever been before. Physically, logistically, that is a huge challenge. And I wanted to know what that involves. What are the major hurdles? It's very complicated to, to organize all these missions in Amazonia. Uh, first, it's harder to get authorization to work with the tribes. You must apply, sometimes take more than one year to get one authorization. The tribes must authorize. And finally, you go. And that to reach the tribe, sometimes take you 10 days, 15 days navigating this river, big river, small river, just that you reach. And after, before to come inside the tribe, you must do a quarantina. You must stay at least 10 days after all vaccinations because the Indians, they don't have antibodies for the disease coming out of the forest. And uh, we must be real clean to reach that. Mm, quarantine, a, a notion that's familiar to all of us now. And the exhibition is named Amazonia, but indeed there's a real focus not just on the region, but on the people, the individuals, the tribes. And when we hear from some of them in your exhibition, there are short documentaries as part of the show, some really troubling concerns emerge, fears about climate change, about deforestation, about pollution. Would you say that there's a possibility that in a few generations' time, these tribes will no longer exist? We hope not. We hope that uh, together we fall the planet, we can do a pressure in the countries that hold Amazonia as the consumers through this planet, because it's this consumption society that is destroying Amazonia. Government of Mr. Bolsonaro is doing real bad for Amazon, but they are in the power after two and a half years. In the, the big destructions of Amazon started 40 years ago. We destroy only in Brazil more than 18% of all ecosystem of Amazonia. And the Indians are desperate. They know that with the end of the ecosystem, the forest, will be the finish of the tribes. And, uh, and they know this, and they are fighting. But uh, I tell you, never there were under a huge pressure as they are now, but never they were as organized as they are now. There is a counter power that is organized, most with the judiciary system in Brazil, and uh, we are fighting, and Indeed. we hope. You speak of resistance. I wanted to point out uh, some important resistance. Communities have taken their fight to protect the rainforest to the very top with a series of protests in the capital, Brasilia. 
Clashes broke out with police there as lawmakers debated a bill that would allow the government to appropriate land within existing indigenous reserves. Politician and indigenous leader Sonia Guajajara sums up what's at stake. This law project 490 is harmful to indigenous people, to our territories, to the environment and to the entire world because it would give a territory to mining exploitation and timber exploitation. Now, these protests come at a chaotic time. In Brasilia, the former environment minister, Ricardo Salles, has recently been forced to step down, accused of blocking a police investigation into illegal uh, logging in the Amazon. Given that we see this resistance from the indigenous community, people like Sonia Guajajara being given a voice at the UN, for example, could this pressure, do you think, force the government to change their environmental policy? I don't believe that, because the government is replaced by one guy worse than him. And it's difficult to imagine something worse than this former minister, but the new one is not bad. And uh, nothing is good inside the Bolsonaro government. It's the most violent, the most irrespectful government that we had ever in Brazil. And uh, we be getting probable solution with the end of Bolsonaro uh, government. But uh, it's, it's very difficult, for, not only for Amazonia, for everything and for all Brazilians. You see, we are the second country on the planet with the biggest number of dead people in the world. We are about 515,000 people killed by COVID and responsible. Number, number one is Mr. Bolsonaro. Mm -hmm. But indeed, in the past, the Brazilian government did take steps to safeguard indigenous people and their territory to a certain extent with the creation of FUNAI, a govern government body that has been a bulwark against the very worst case scenarios uh, in the last uh, 50, 60 years. I believed you worked with them when it came to contacting some of the communities who'd only recently made contact with urban Brazilians like yourself. What was that like? I tell you, uh, Brazil, this history of Brazil, was the most responsible country as far as environment is concerned. You see, all the Amazonian territory, Funai fight in all his history to transform 25% of Amazonia territory in Indian territory protected by law. The Ministry of uh, Environment in Brazil, the history was amazing. We have uh, about uh, 24.9% of all Amazonia national parks protected by law. And now the, the, the most important actor of Bolsonaro is transforming FUNAI in an institution that is backing the agribusiness, not the Indians. Before FUNAI was directed by anthropologists, sociologists, that people that have a very high level in the understanding of the Indian affair. Now is controlled by a policeman, is a policeman that is directing FUNAI. And uh, it's the same for the Ministry of Environment. Mr. Bolsonaro took all the control of the penetration in Amazonia, penetration in the Indian territories, and they try hard to get all these territories. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Now, going back to your photography, the diversity we see in terms of languages, beliefs, behaviours among the indigenous people is fascinating. And one of the things that struck me as a common thing, which was beautiful, is that many instances of people at rest or at play or doing what we might consider non-essential activities. What did you observe about the way they spend their days, their relationship with time? The Indians had a completely different life that we have here. No, they do some job when it is necessary to do some job. And they do some agriculture, they hunt, and, but the hunting for them is not a work. They are inside the forest. I went with them, for example, for the campments of hunting, campments of fishing. It's so fantastic, it's so amazing. No, and it's another life. We have no property. We don't have, uh, when an Indian dies, we get everything that he has, we put fire. There is no heritage. And uh, we live the life linked with the nature. And uh, it's another quality and another kind of life. I tell for everyone that I live for seven years in paradise. Amazonia 
is probably the most beautiful place on the planet in the best way of life and planet. Mm, and long may it continue. Hopefully your photographs will go some way towards ensuring that. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sebastian Salgado. Now we'll wrap up the show with some more sounds from Brazil, courtesy of the rap group Bro MCs. These two pairs of brothers hail from the state of Mato Grosso in the centre west of the country, where they were brought up in an indigenous reserve for Guarani Kaiowa people. Their music focuses on the threat to their land and their tribe. Here's a clip of them performing in Rio. Otherwise, remember, you can get more arts and culture on our website. We're on social media, too. Do stay with us. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. Bienvenue à Paris. The French capital has been an object of fascination for centuries and it's one of the most visited cities in the world. And what's not to love? By day or by night, it's a beautiful city full of towering monuments, inspiring museums and romantic cafes. And yet tourists often say Paris would be so nice if it weren't for the Parisians. So where does the bad reputation come from? Join us as we turn the spotlight on the city of light and its peculiar inhabitants, les Parisiens. French Connections on France 24 and France24.com.